have to jump off of my walk about the past to find and relate and trust. How hard it can be. So uh, especially important here is the word fast. So it's not about just the implementation, but you have all the fast one. Um, I will just present what is the emulator. Well, I call it just your. It's difficult to pronounce, I will admit. And then I will talk about the CPU implementation with five. And then let's see if there's still time. I have several topics. Um, how to not idle in JavaScript. This is difficult. And uh, file system and network. Uh, good. So what is your? Well, just go to this website here. Then it looks something like this. Um, it's an open risk, 1,000 JavaScript emulator, one Linux with network support. So we have here the terminal window, we have here some sort of frame buffer, a few things to control and so on. And uh, it's a GitHub, so you can just go to this website. I want to just show you an overview of what you can do with it. So most of all, so uh, gaming, you can play Monkey Island, Doom, and Line 2. And then uh, you have a full X window system, you can watch movies if you want. And um, there's a browser inside, so if there's time, I will, I will explain a little bit more. Can you browse to do it in browser? Huh? Can you browse to do Yeah, yeah, you can browse, yeah. It has a, it has a rogue like network access. So you can, you can run do it in the browser. Yes, I don't know. So in fact, totally silly. I don't. In the output, I will explain why. So you don't. Uh, okay. So it's almost on the top of this. Uh, the compilers don't support open this for this five yet. So they're, they're important. Uh, so um, I would like to talk about a little bit the technical details. So um, this is how it currently looks like. So especially it's separated into two uh, parts. Here's the master part, um, which is, um, contains everything which runs in the web house, as well as the user interfaces and so on, input, keyboard, events, terminal, and so on, and the worker, everything which is which should be just pure JavaScript without using any important libraries. The open risk CPU here, memory, here the different devices which are accessed via NMIO, the terminal, keyboard, Ethernet, and so on. The new thing here is, for example, sound. Mm -hmm. And then also Rodeo, and this is really one of the most important features. So we have a file system which is just outside of this browser, which is implemented in JavaScript, and uh, well, you can test this, we have all green in here. So, um, so when they asked me, so can I do the same with Risk 5? So, and um, there was Google Summer Code Project 2015, I said yes. And then I got here the student, and he's unfortunately not here. So, Hanoi, uh, Philippe, Gunther, and uh, together, together we did it. So, um, I'll just tell you a bit about this pipe where we have this, this nice uh, talk at the beginning. So, this is what I realized after a certain time. So, um, really, what I have also to say is so that is like ISA. So you have your K32 registers, usually for Python instructions, EC encoding and so on, you have this modularization. What is important for me, it has no history, which is very nice, but if you know the ARM architecture or something, it's quite horrible. A little NDR, so open this is big NDR, here we have little NDR. For example, very nice also that you need only two instructions for 232 bit chunks. Um, for delayed instruction, like for open risk, you don't have directly conditional instructions like for the ARM architecture. You don't have any flags. I don't know if this is good or bad. Um, complete implementation of modern diff and so on, PC relative addressing modes, and also the like instructions. So I've emulated a few CPUs and I really um, I really like the design here. You know. Interesting is that the Linux at the moment does run with the help of a proxy server. It doesn't run native, it uh, doesn't have direct uh, hardware access. This is some also during the project, and this is also the, the question I had at the beginning. Um, so, that for me, when I implemented it, that um, I, I hope to implement it with MMIO, but in the end, so um, in principle, it was even removed at a certain time. And um, uh, so, no MMIO. Instead, we had this two register based 8 bit interface, which was then unfortunately 
also 64 bits, so I implemented 32 bits, so in principle that means that half the devices uh, weren't supported yet in the <coughs> under Linux or the proxy kernel. Um, now, of course, it's still under development, so especially the 32 bit part is not well tested, so I'm basically the first one who was able to run the complete Linux system um, on the third, just under 32 bits. Okay, and this is um, just something which I, which I, I think um, will be solved pretty soon. Um, this is just a little bit confusing. Well, I'm not, I'm not an expert on this, but it was pretty hard in the end to figure out how really this different modes and so on, how it works, how the switch them and so on, how this mode stack works and so on. Um, so on the, finally, the, the, this does look a little bit different. Um, the open risk module, so um, you see we have less interfaces here, just because MMIO is um, not supported here, but we have the terminal, frame buffer, and block device. Then also very interesting uh, device defaults, um, which then has you did really the different syscalls, and this is funny. So you run Linux, which doesn't make sense the hardware, you have the proxy kernel, and for example, if you want to shut down it, so it sends a, a syscall exit here to the server, and well, this is an, an how it works. So, um, good. So, um, then now the problem is not implemented. JavaScript, so why JavaScript? Well, JavaScript is the language of the web, means it runs everywhere and it is available immediately. And these are the two, uh, well, you don't need more, you just want to, <laughs> to use it. Um, JavaScript by itself is a problem, it doesn't support 64 bit integers, it just means um, I can't fast implement a 64 bit version of. Um, of risk five. So JavaScript is very critical <laughs> typing. Um, it's always nice. So uh, one, two, three, to so to this plus four, five, six. It's is one, two, thirty-four, five, six. So this is quite <laughs> I didn't expect this. So yeah. um, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and well, this one, a uh, negative number, okay, this gives also not a number, but I did quite compare the secret X and the secret fails. <laughs> and then also an empty string here is equal to fails, and it says two. So, yeah. Um, good. <coughs> JavaScript is considered slow. Well, um, if this is true or not, it's difficult to say. So, a lot of work is done on this. So, actually, at least four companies in the world spent every year billions uh, really to optimize this JavaScript and they did an awesome, awesome job, I would say, um, uh, to speed up the maximum performance. So actually, if you do it right, and I will not show you how to do it right, you can, you can definitely do it well. So one problem is when you want to emulate such a processor, so all numbers are doubled. There are no integers. So you have, for example, this number here, and then you can plot it, and then you can see it's just I just found it. There's <coughs> internal, it treats numbers as integers, but then, for example, if you add plus one here, then it's de optimized it also to double. There are some kind of logical operators here, um, like or zero, which turns this number here to minus one, or here a, a right shift, which then uh, gives you the same number here. But thanks to FGL, it was also decided. Uh, that you need some type things, so there are these type values. We don't have type variables, but we need some, but there are type values. Okay. Um, well, this is just one implementation of how you can write an emulator while you have here and this loop. You want to advance the timer, you want to check the interrupts, then you have your, your um, program counter, you want to translate this uh, PC here from virtual to physical, so it's a PPC, and then you read this. Instruction. Then you add here four bytes to get the next advanced program counter, and then you want to decode it. So here, switch instruction, you have then certain bits. And um, what's wrong with the following code? Well, it's actually here. What happens actually internal? So that's so PC is assumed to be an integer. 
you add 4 to PC, and then it checks for overflow. And in case of an overflow, if D optimizes uh, this PC value to a double, and then, and that's even more important, so then um, everywhere where this one is used, uh, there's a cascade of the optimizations for the pool code. That means uh, really you, you, run, you run it for 10 seconds or something, 20 MIPS, something, and then immediately it drops to 0.1 MIPS or something. And then exactly something like this happens here. So it's a cascade of the optimizations. I have reached um, an overflow here. So what is the solution for it? Well, it's actually very simple, you see equal to PC plus 4 or 0. So what happens here? And add 4 to PC and just ignore this one and pop it solve. Yes, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and then you, you realize here uh, that there can be more problems and then you add here, for example, all the variables or 0 and also here, or 0 and that for the result. You add it here, and then in the end, you end up with um, this S and what your S, JS, and probably you've heard about it. Um, this is a new mode of JavaScript, especially implemented in Firefox. And this adds, in principle, addition. Well, first of all, it just adds additional error messages. So you, um, and to, to, to tell you everywhere where you have to put these signs here. So, um, you write you write your code, uh, 1,000 lines of code or something, and then you get around 2,000 error messages. And um, just just when you add this one, and um, and it's still fully compatible. So, Firefox implemented it in 2013. Edge implemented it uh, a few months ago. So Microsoft, well, it, unfortunately, it doesn't want it. I don't get any error messages. I don't know. So let's wait another half a year. It works. Um, the syntax is a little bit bad here, so you don't have. So usually, for example, if you if you have your variable, you have an array, you want to set it. So this is then how you would write it normally. But here you have to you have only one array, the heap. You need some pointer to it, so it's really therefore it's called a code heap. So you have to read everything by hand. You have here uh, this variable, this index, which you have to shift left by two to and uh, finally by 2 to the right, and um, this is a problem, it's a 32 bit array, and therefore with the shift to the right, you, assume, you can assume that it's always aligned for fine. Good. Um, I did some benchmarks, I've just showed it. So this is a benchmark from last year of my code and of all of two others, JS Linux from the B Stellar and E86. And you can see that last year it was um, definitely by at least an order of magnitude towards of magnitude the fastest one. And but then um, Fabrice came at least last uh, one month ago. Fabrice is a developer of Pemo, by the way. Um, so so he came and asked me, hey, I have also transformed my code to Ethel, and we have to do we do the benchmark and so on. So I did it, and then especially he did a really great job. So 21, 9, 35, so it's really on the same scale, it's in x86 implementation. Well, um, over this thread is, is unchanged, and here now the orange one is almost on the same leak here. The 86 actually got worse, I have told him, so let's see what happens here. Um, just to show you what, what speeds of such a second, so what does it mean? So we have here what to do, 120 minutes. Then it, there was a step back with the core i7, with the first generation, I got only 75. But now with the next generation, I guess uh, Intel has solved my broken and that they have to do something. So 180 MIPS and 246 MIPS even. So I guess it has to do just the, um, in, they have to work more with the code, which is, which is not really optimized, and especially boundary checks. So I guess here in this generation, they took care about that boundary checks are no longer, are no longer um, don't, don't cost you anything. And therefore, you get here now even up to 46 bits. Um, Safari, Apple A7, wow, 81 on my pad. <coughs> and in, in principle, the speed is compared to 1997. And we talk here about, um, about around 2,000 times of code here for the total implementation of this file. Uh, 
Well, you saw that this pipe is a little bit too, uh, it's a little bit slower here. And the reason is at the moment that you need more, more, more code to decode uh, the instructions, so this is open risk. You have your one switch case, phase 29, this um, immediate end, and you have just this code here at the moment for this pipe. We have one switch, and then, and then it's the yeah, second one, so we have to chop two times, and I think this is the reason um, why, why, why it's the slower bar. I can solve this again. Um, and it takes some time. But you can see also why open disk or risk pipe is so much faster. Well, if you look at I've just copied the code for an ARM emulator, and this is on the, the, the end, the logical, uh, the median end implementation here. Well, um, obvious. So you have your flags and so on. You have to have to tweak the PC run, the Twitter X one and so on. You get the test bit and so on. So this is much more complicated. Um, also able in the end to to put in a fence, fence technique. This is also something which for which for the, for the X86 is much more complicated. One principle. Um, you can just check here for a physical PC if, if you match your offense variable, and if not, you have you can redirect the instruction from the memory here, then add by four, and then get a switch case. And this is then a nice thing because you don't have to translate um, your your um, uh, PC all the time. And this uh, was so important. So, so in principle, this this has to be executed 246 million times a second. And then I thought, okay, it's so important, so let's see what the, what the Firefox is doing. And then I did here um, the disassembly, and you can then even see, so here the comparison, how this works, and so on. It's a little bit too much now to understand everything, but and this was pretty interesting, and I found indeed uh, several, several problems. So for example, here the unnecessary load, they say save here the, the value, and here they go again. And so on, said it's still in the register, but they don't do it. But, but they don't, but they load it from memory again, for example. Then they sub, they sub here, uh, they subtract here some variable in the switch instruction. And um, uh, well, to say part by the table, so this can be removed just by adding a KCO. And um, unnecessary check. So um, uh, they do here unnecessary check here with comparison, so I have here. And set self F, but they still check here for some um, if the value is higher than, than this parameter here. So this is now Baxilla. So when I say fast, I mean I mean really fast. So I do finally even optimizations um, on the assembly level. So what happens? Um, so what time is it? Okay, ten minutes. That's more or less. Um, so um, another problem is how to not idle the child's tell. And um, probably you have seen this window here, right? So um, what happens here? So you just execute too much JavaScript um, in an endless loop, but usually, but you know there are there are programs, there are games, you have websites which can use the CPU by 100%. And the solution here is this function set time out. Uh, you have your function and then the milliseconds when it should be executed, and you just set it here to zero. And then we don't have this problem. It just in this function just goes back, executes, um, well checks what's, what's, what else he has to do, then returns to this function immediately, and then you don't get this one. So how does how it look like? One twenty, for example, one twenty milliseconds, and I do zero. One twenty milliseconds, and so on. Um, and then and then you don't get this message here. So this is how every implementation JavaScript looks like. So the problem is I use a work of web. And then, obviously, if I do it well, the timeout works different. So if I add here zero, then the message, message queue is never processed. So there are some keyboard, keyboard input events and so on, um, terminal events and so on. This is never processed. What you get when you put here four, four milliseconds, it works. And that means um, that you can run for 20 milliseconds and idle for four and so on. So this is. Uh, quite bad, so uh, so JavaScript has messages and so on, but well, it's event room, they say probably you don't need it, but um, you don't get it. 
okay, what you can do is to make and find a head message being called. How does it work? Uh, you have your, you set your thing, you set back a form, and then you run for 20 milliseconds. When you when you freeze the, the form, you get you send immediately the thing, get the number, you send you send after the 20 milliseconds something back. You run for 20 milliseconds, you can set your some terminal, the update and so on. You do here all the time this ping pong, now there's a keyboard input event. But it has still this thing here which has to execute here, so about 20 milliseconds. And then you have the keyboard event finally and then send this form back. So this is um, this is finally how you can solve it. So this is the best thing I can do. Well, um, yeah. I, I won't tell you uh, maybe next year um, what does it mean uh, that when you implement sound or timing. <laughs> so um, it's kind of tall at the same time. So um, unreliable speed, you have JavaScript doesn't support milliseconds and some doesn't support microseconds. Um, interrupts exist in principle only when you are idle, and I don't want to go idle. And um, we have also this message queue between work and master. Well, I managed it, but I would need probably another 20 slides just to explain all this, all this work. Okay, um, let's now come to the two modules. So this is now, okay, this is how, so I want to just show you two subsystems. And the most important one is your file system, and how to implement or well, let's say, uh, no, or oh, yeah. I wouldn't have time now. Okay, so the file system is just cool. Um, <laughs> you, I, I had the problem um, how to, if how to, I have a 200 megabytes, I have 5,000 files, and I have to load it in the, on the internet. So obviously when you load the website, you don't want to load a 200 megabyte. So I have to, I have to solve something. So um, how does it work? I have I have implemented my file system outside, the put your IP. I load the file system layout from the Linux boot process, which looks like this, this is just JSON file format, and then I can load each file here and so on. So how does it look about well, okay, that's probably no time for it add more. So um, you can you have full control of the atomic file operations, with atomic file operations full control from the outside watching files and so on. You can download and upload files and you can even sync with the with a server here so everyone there's some user ID you have on my server you have one gigabyte of quota and if you upload it and so on if you use the same user here then it downloads this one megabyte and then you you have the same data. Um, network well I don't have much of all so you have here Full network access in the web browser, and um, the server is actually in the USA. It's connected via web sockets. Internet, it sends internet frames over the internet. You have a full working internet, so you can just open two windows, left and right, and you can you have your IP address. You have an, you can do an SSH between them, so you can have two windows and you, you can make an encrypted connection between them. And as you have also here uh, all the tools and so on, several so web browsers and so on. Um, okay, let's end this. So, um, this is Emulator useful. Well, um, I learned JavaScript a bit, so this is the first point. Um, technology, it's of course a technology demonstration. It's at Wordsman, so you can put it on your website, so for all this, for this file, and see, well, this may be the first step to. to to know, to, to see what, what's possible with such a CPU, so, so just show them and emulate on the website how this, how this works. Um, you can build on architect tutorials, so think about uh, the terminals, think about Git or something, you want to write something, so you have your own options, you do a very nice interactive tutorial. You have an easy way uh, to port and present to the terminal software. Teaching, open languages, well, I told you that I have some sort of a development device environment and hope um, like network access well um, you can do port scans anonymous. I haven't said this. <laughs> if someone asks me I haven't said this. Um, well but I use it also well, I, I use it also to check something if some if some website is available <laughs> if, if um, 
a free blog, so if I can use SSH or something. So, um, well, when I tried to access Google yesterday, it told me that there's too many access from this IP address and so on. So, uh, strange access, so I'm not allowed to search in Google, so I don't know. It's not my server uh, with access, so I just use it. Um, but environmental binary, so you compile something, you can correctly check it. You can um, uh, JavaScript benchmark, of course. Um, uh, you can you can test test all these different browsers, and you can play games. So um, well, I have sorry, yeah, okay, I get two minutes. So last year I showed you a slide future um, uh, future last year. So this is what, what I what I wrote on this slide. This is manage so sound works. SMP works, so you can run up to 60 cores at the same time. Um, and Debian is unfortunately it still doesn't work. Um, and Firefox, well, it compiles. It's huge, it's more than 100 megabytes and crashes, so there's still a lot of work to do all the rest. Your dynamic recompilation, I just tried to do a little bit faster, but couldn't, I wasn't able. Uh, it's actually slower because, uh, because uh, the process are really that complicated. Next step, um, I, would, I want to switch everything to full boot. I own driver support here. Um, uh, I would like to implement the boot here, you know, GPU, and then also um, this will definitely happen so that also this client um, gets some um, boot here support and so on. So, and then finally, hopefully, also that I have a 64 bit with five. Okay, um, I would like to thank, of course, a few people that I just mentioned here. Stefan, without him, probably this uh, would, would, wouldn't look like uh, or wouldn't work like the way it does now. So, for the infinite part of the tool chain and so on, but there are also other so network support. So, on here, of course, I can implement those five for the C development website and, and so on. Okay, uh, this is the website, how it looks like now before this five. And, um, I have just, well, you can't call it like this, so I, I'm very bad at names, so this is my, these are my count, count ideas, and um, if you have a good suggestion, it would be nice. And I would like to thank you. <laughs> for your time.
so unfortunately the, the picture yes. is bigger than expected. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, okay, just Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> 